Over the past decade, I've run more than 25,000 miles, which equals to circling the entire globe and then some. In this video, I'm gonna give you seven things I wish I knew at the very beginning so you can get the lessons without the scars. My name is Nicholas, I'm a sports scientist and physiotherapist. Now let's just get straight to it. After I ended my professional career, I had a couple of years where I just needed to decompress and not train with any structure. And in those years, it was like I was afraid to be confronted with my own fitness because I knew what it could be if I started training hard again. But now I had a full-time job and kids and I just did not have the same time to train anymore. And so because I was afraid of my own fitness, I completely fell off the wagon. Fast forward a couple of years and I started to try to take training seriously again, but with the time constraints that I had. So naturally, I took out some of my old training plans because they worked in the past, and I thought, I just need to do the same, just without the swimming and cycling on top. But that was a huge mistake. You see, even though that was the perfect plan for me at the time, the problem was I was not that guy anymore. Not because I could not do the workouts and I even found the time for it, but because I simply could not recover the same way that I used to. So within weeks, I burned out. And I realized it's not just about physiology, like you read about in the studies or in the books. It's actually more about the stresses that you have outside of training when you get older. So you might get kids, you might have a house, you might get more responsibility at work. And all of these things combined just makes it way harder to recover than back in the day when I only had to focus on myself. You see, what we sometimes forget, especially if you're someone who's seeking high achievement, is that you're not a robot. You need to build a plan for your actual life and not a plan for this idea of a perfect life where the stars align, but your actual messy life with stress and family and job and chaos. And that's okay, because that's the only way you're going to stay consistent over the long term, and paradoxically, that's how you reach your goals. I started cycling when I was 12 years old and I got to ride alongside some of the best athletes in the world who later became Olympic medalists. And back then, I was always looking for what the best did differently. Was it their training? Was it their gear? Or did they have a special mindset? Then, when I turned to triathlon, I once again came to a place where I was training and racing against some of the best athletes in the world. And I was still trying to distill this world-class performance because I did not have the answer yet. I mean, they must have been doing something different. But the better I became, the more I started to realize that their secret was right in front of me the whole time. Because the truth is, you'll get 99% of the results by just focusing on three things. Train consistently, clean up your diet, and fix your sleep. It's the boring stuff that works, and that's why most people are not willing to do it. Because guess what? It gets boring. It's not exciting. It's not a new training strategy. It's not some new supplement. It's not a new shoe. It's just doing the same thing over and over and over again and perfecting that. When I was younger, training with older athletes, I was always told to really enjoy my ability to recover because once I turned 30, that would go downhill. And while there is some truth to that, it's not as drastic as most people think. So why do people, including myself, suddenly have such a hard time recovering after they turn 30? It's because your body does not separate training stress from life stress. And when you're young, you have all the time in the world because you have very few responsibilities. So the time to relax and watch TV and go for a walk and even cook dinner are plentiful. But once you get older, you could have a house and a kids and a full-time job and a ton of responsibilities. And all of a sudden, not only don't you have the time to sit down and relax, but also you have to train at times when it just fits in. You can't train at times where you feel good. And that means sometimes going for a run when you're completely exhausted. And on top of that, most people don't sleep as much either. All of these factors combined give you more stress, and in science, it's known as allostatic load. 
or basically all the stress that is not training. You see, to your body, working hard or getting up three times a night to check on the kids is just as hard as going for a workout. Now, I used to think that training was a way to de-stress. And while that might be true for the mind, it's not the same for the body. And I wish I knew sooner that when you have a lot of stresses in life, you need to dial back your training because you won't recover as fast and that is when you're going to get those injuries. Think about it. The last time you got an injury or got pimples or you got a flu, what happened in the weeks prior to that? For most people, there was a ton of stress or they didn't sleep as well or they put in a ton of training. So if you want to perform over the long term and become great, then don't compensate for a day with 14 hours of work with a hard training day the day after. You need to recover from both. Unfortunately, that's how our body works. My old coach used to have this practice where he would have us line up before a hard training and then write down what our goals were for that training. And it was not just one goal. It was two very different goals. An external goal, which could be hitting a certain heart rate or a certain pace, and an internal goal. Things like working with our mindset during the hard intervals or just letting go of the stress of the day. Or maybe it was a technical focus, like increasing our cadence. And the thing about a practice like that is that it gives it a purpose. It makes each session impactful. And just imagine two different people who show up to practice three times per week. One of them sets a goal for each session, and one of them does not. Who do you think are going to improve the fastest? After working with athletes in both team sports and individual sports, I've actually noticed that people in individual sports are way better at this than people in team sports. And I think it's because in individual sports, they are usually left to themselves for most of their practice. So if they are runners, they will usually run a ton by themselves. And in team sports, they usually practice everything together. So in your next session, just take 30 seconds during your warm up to think about what is your external goal and what is your internal goal for that session. And I promise you, you'll see a big difference. And especially over time, you're going to improve so much faster. I have always had big goals. And if you have watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I actually actively train my ability to set longer and longer goals. But it has only worked because I knew exactly what I needed to do to achieve that goal. But when I set this new goal of growing this YouTube channel, then I was reminded of what it feels like not to know what you're supposed to do to hit your goal, which is the same problem that many people who are getting into running actually faces. But then I came across a concept that completely changed how I set goals when I don't know the tactics to get there. It's called shadow goals. It means that instead of thinking about what it takes to reach your goal, you think about exactly what it would take to make sure that you would absolutely fail at that goal. For example, if you wanted to make absolutely sure that you never became a great runner, what would you do? You would probably never learn anything new about running. You would probably never work on your running form. You would probably be inconsistent and run less and have poor sleep and try to gain weight. But here's the genius part about shadow goals. Now we just reverse it. So if we thought that to never become a great runner, we should have poor sleep, then guess what? We're going to fix our sleep. If we thought that we should never learn anything new about running or focus on our running form, then we're going to learn a ton of new about running and we're going to really dial in our running form. The brain always comes up with reasons you should fail. Let's use that to your advantage. This year, I broke one of my key lessons. And the worst thing was, I knew, but I did it anyway. You see, earlier this year, Puma released a new shoe that they claimed to be the fastest super shoe yet. And so, because of the nerd I am, I wanted to test those shoes against my Nike Alpha Flies. So, I bought a pair that arrived four days before a half marathon I did in the spring. And even though I knew it was a risk, I decided to wear them on race day, even though I had only run in them for six minutes in total. So basically, I had no idea how they would perform. Now, the race went great, I had a super time, but when I got home 
I started to get a bit of aching in my Achilles tendon. Over the next few months, I started to train again and I thought that I've gotten rid of it. But two weeks before Copenhagen half of this year, which was my A race or my biggest race of the season, which I've trained a whole year for, I did some race pace efforts in this shoe again and well, the pain came back. And unfortunately, to a point where I was not able to compete in Copenhagen. Now, I've been training a full year for that race, so it was kind of devastating. And who knows, I might have gotten that injury anyway. But when I look back through my training, the only real thing that stands out is the fact that I changed to completely new shoes for a race. And the worst thing is, I knew. You see, race day is not for experiments. You need to test your pacing, your nutrition, and your gear in training. Ideally, as close to race pace conditions and effort as possible. That way, your body can adapt over time and nothing new surprises you on race day. Here's the thing. This is not the first time I've been injured. Over the course of my career, I've crashed my bike more times than I can count. I've basically broken every bone in my body. I even displaced my hip and got the big chain ring stuck in my calf once. And I've had every overuse injury that you can imagine. And every single time I'm reminded of the most important lesson of all. You don't realize how much you love moving until you can't. Every time I'm injured or sick, I realize just how lucky I was to move injury and pain free. So appreciate the ability to train. Gratitude will keep you consistent way longer than discipline ever will. You don't have to run, you get to run. Now, over all those years, I've also picked up 12 easy habits that can help you run faster for longer that you could start doing right now. And I'll show you exactly what they are and how to implement them in this video right here.